three years ago, and it left her unable to talk, although she knew what she wanted to say. And we as a family came and visited her uh, regularly in that first year. But what we didn't know is that each of those occasions, which were separate, were, were greeted in the same way. And that is, as we came through the door, she had something absolutely urgent that she had to tell us. And it took us two or three, and sometimes minutes to hours, to figure out, depending upon their own skills, what that was. And here they were at Christmas, sitting and talking about it, and guess what? She was telling them all the very same thing. Now, they didn't think that it was so strange because she was a talker and she always had something to say. But in this case, what she was saying to them was very different. Very different in the sense that she had never said these words specifically to them before. And it was, how much I care for you, how much I value you, how much these ties mean to me. And in that process of explaining that, and of course she can't use words, she can't talk. And each time they would come and see her for the next year, she still was not talking to them to any great degree, but the first thing she wanted to do was to reach out, touch them, hold them, joke, kid, those kinds of things that she could do, and in a form of an expression that she had never had before. And all of that family said we were closer to our mother in many ways in those three years than we had been before, and it didn't mean that there, it was a very loving relationship throughout, but they had never heard that kind of thing in a non-spoken format. So the, the real surprise, and I'll get to the end of this, is, <laughs> is that they said there will be no further words in this service. And they said, and before you there was a program with the pictures of their life, there was some poetry, and there was some music. And he said, I think what my mother would most want you to know about life is that you don't need words necessarily to tell those people how much you care about them and love them. And she said, I think that what she would want you to do is to sit here for 45 minutes, not think about Edith, but think about your own relationships. Think about your own ties to those people who are important. And so for 45 minutes, we sat there and listened to music and thought about that. And I tell you, it changed my life. Now, I have been to a lot of memorial services of people I've served over the years, and I have never seen anything like that in my day. And the reason I bring that up is that this is the central feature that these people who had gone through transition and managed to make it from what were very, not easy necessarily times, but to full, complete, by their definition, existences shared. They had kept their relationship front and center, and it doesn't mean that it hadn't been challenged, didn't mean that individually they hadn't had hard times or together as a couple, but they had made that transition very clearly together. So, it must seem strange, see if I can get this to work, no, to hear from a speech language pathologist that the most important thing in this transition is not talking. And it doesn't mean that talking isn't important. In fact, I'm going to talk about talking in a relationship. But what's the most important thing are keeping those ties and bonds. Rick Sanders, David Luterman were in here talking about relationships and how they hold together. Uh, there couldn't be anything truer that I can tell in terms of what is the one thing above all that you want to try to preserve and hang on and move along through this period of, of uh, transformation. Now, sitting in your handout, you don't have to dig that out because I'm about to read it to you here. Uh, what I've done is go back and think about these people that I've served, and I'm going to give you a very skewed kind of quick view of what goes on in relationships over a period of time that I've seen. And I'm going to do it first from the relationship of the spouse or the co-survivor to the person who has aphasia, they talking about that, then they having them talk about themselves and then doing the same thing 
for the person with aphasia.